Welcome to the Vacation Rental Success Podcast. So we've been sharing information about the Vacation Rental Management Growth Accelerator Coaching Program for the last few episodes and how this is your opportunity to solve your biggest rental business challenges and get a top coach in your corner. However, one of the most valuable aspects of the program are the guest presenters. And over eight weeks, you'll join a group of ambitious professionals and gain insights from a collection of incredible guest presenters like Brooke Fouts, Tyann Marsink, Alexa Noda, and Travis Wilburn. These industry leaders will share their expertise on topics like building trust, mastering owner acquisition, crafting exceptional guest experiences, and more. Led by your favorite podcast host and coach, Heather Bayer, this program dives deep into the core areas of your business, providing you with actionable strategies to tackle your biggest challenges. And by the end of this program, you'll have a personalized growth plan and the confidence to lead your business into the future. Don't let another season pass you by. Learn from the best and invest in your success today. Click on the link in the description of this episode or visit vacationrentalformula.com for more information. Let's get started. Here's your host and coach, Heather Bayer. I love a good story. Tell me one when you're trying to sell me something and you've probably got yourself a customer. Stories are about relationships, about community and connections and history, and they can trigger emotions that can change minds. In today's episode, we are talking about storytelling. And my guest is Jeff Barch, a communication strategist at Story Greenlight. And he's going to come on and tell us how we can tell better stories. This is the Vacation Rental Success Podcast, keeping you up to date with news, views, information and resources on this rapidly changing short-term rental business. I'm your host, Heather Bayer, and with 25 years of experience in this industry, I'm making sure you know what's hot, what's not, what's new and what will help make your business a success. Welcome to another episode of the Vacation Rental Success Podcast. This is your host, Heather Bayer. And as ever, I'm super delighted to be back with you once again. Hey, it's really hot in Ontario this week. The temperature is soaring and I've been swimming a lot. And I'm going to tell you a story about that in a moment, because today we are talking about storytelling. We're talking about how we can stand apart from our competition and make a real impact with a good story. I've talked about this before. We have explored storytelling in About Us pages and other pages of your website. But in today's episode, my guest is going to be talking about strategic and tactical storytelling. And I think you are going to love this. But I want to share a story with you to start with. I've got a river at the bottom of my back garden and it's called the Big East. And it's what's known as an Oxbow River. I remember this from geography classes at school. You know, it's one of the few things I do remember from school because it was quite a long time ago. But the Big East is a meandering river. It curves and it creates these massive sandbanks and beaches. And we're fortunate enough to live on one. But the river is cold, at times very cold. And in the years I've been here, I've spent hours swimming in our deep water holes. But it can take me sometimes up to half an hour to actually get myself submerged. I will inch out, feeling my way and make sure I'm comfortable with the temperature at each step as I get deeper into it. And then I finally take a plunge into the icy depths. Actually, (laughs) that's a bit overdramatic. But hey, this is a story. Anyhow, I have my 12-year-old granddaughter staying with me and her method of getting in the water is asking me to give her a count of three, two, one, and then she just runs and dives in. But hey, she's 12. That's what they do. The water's still cold and I, as I, and I can hear this from her entry scream, but she does it in one. So this week I've been taking the plunge, Aria style. And after I'd done that a few times, it struck me that I so often do this type of thing in business 
as well. I'm slow. I test the water on multiple occasions before committing to something. I'm hesitant and reluctant. But when I finally jump in and get over the shock of making that final decision, it's invariably fine. And it makes me wonder why I hesitated so much at the start. I'm going to ponder that one a little bit more. But anyway, that's a story. You might have resonated with it in some way. You might have got a visual of the run and dive into a flowing river. And you might have heard that scream in your head. It could have dredged up a memory or an emotion of being a child and then moving on into that caution of adulthood, which is where I'm coming from. But that's what a well-told story does. And in our world, it can transform a potential guest's curiosity into a booking. It can change a one-time visitor into a loyal repeat customer. And it has the power to build trust in the mind of an owner who's looking for a property management option. And it could make you the number one choice. So today we're exploring a topic that can change your business, the power of storytelling. Because creating powerful and compelling stories can set you apart. It can help you attract more guests and build lasting relationships with property owners and with the community. So to guide us through this fascinating subject, I've got a special guest. Jeff Barch is a communication strategist at Story Greenlight. He's got a great background, mainly in Hollywood, where he shaped content for major media outlets, including ABC, NBC, Disney, Apple, Netflix, and his expertise doesn't stop there. Jeff has been also recognised as a top 30 thought leader in the accounting advisory world, supporting thousands of students and clients in over 50 countries. So I'm going to talk about this, you know, how do you go from Hollywood to accounting? Interesting story. But through Story Greenlight, Jeff empowers professionals to attract and retain their ideal clients by leveraging the power of story. Now, Jeff lives in Cleveland, Ohio. I'm going to ask that question too. How do you go from Hollywood to Cleveland? With, and he lives with his wife and two young children, continues to inspire and teach others about the transformative potential of storytelling. And he believes that the power of story is within reach of everyone and that human connection is everything. So without further ado, let's move on over to my great discussion with Jeff Barch. <laughs> So I am super excited to have with me today my new mastermind colleague, <laughs> colleague, I guess, Jeff Barch. And when I say mastermind colleague, I've just joined Cliff Ravenscraft Next Level Mastermind program. And as I was just saying to Jeff, before we got into this discussion, it was like being a new girl at school because there's some fantastic people within this mastermind group, but they've been talking to each other for a long time and I've just sort of arrived and they've made me super, super welcome. And when I heard what Jeff did and how amazing he is at talking about storytelling, I wanted to share him with you. So welcome, Jeff. Thanks so much for joining me. Thanks, Heather. Looking forward to this. This is going to be good. This is going to be great. And yes, I, you know, that that new girl at school thing is, is beginning to fade off a bit now because I've been around for a few weeks. Loving this whole mastermind experience. And I know you've been doing it you know, quite, quite some time with Cliff. Just give me a quick overview of how long you have been within that group. Well, it's actually... Truth be told, I am still within my first year within that group. So uh, there, there are members of the group who've been in there for multiple years, but this is actually my first year. But when one meets week after week, mm -hmm. you do learn a lot about each other. So uh, it's a great group and it's, uh, it's some great bonding that takes place and a lot of huge perspective shared across different industries. And that's one of the cool things that I love about that group. And I know that's going to happen in our conversation here too. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I love this. There's some shifts that go on there and, you know, I've only been along to, I think two or three and, and I've seen shifts that have taken place. So I'm loving it, but let's focus this right on you because you've got such an amazing, we're going to be talking about storytelling and you have an amazing story yourself. I 
just want you to share the story. You know, what took you from Hollywood to Cleveland? <laughs> well, you know what? There are, as any good story does, it has multiple different chapters, lots of different twists and turns. But for the case of our discussion here, I'll start at the idea of I ended up growing up in the Midwest U.S., and I ended up in Hollywood making TV for a living for some of the biggest media companies on the face of the planet. So here I am. I'm in my early 20s making content for ABC and NBC and Universal and Disney and Apple and Netflix. And I used to think that Hollywood was all about TV and movies. What I learned over the years was that it's about something much more powerful and deep rooted than just TV or movies. And when I figured out how to wrap my head around what those ideas are, I discovered that you can transfer them into all kinds of different contexts, especially business. And there was a time when I was at an industry panel and one of the people on this panel was a gentleman who was, uh, who, who did what we call re-recording mixing at Warner Brothers Studios. So this guy, his job was to sit in his own private movie theater every day. And uh, he had a crew of people who worked with him and he, together they would mix hundreds of channels of sound into the final soundtrack that people would experience as the sound of the movie. And so to say that this had a lot of moving parts with it would be a massive understatement. I mean, this guy sat at this mixing console that literally stretched from one side of the room to the other. It was, you, you take a look at these mixing consoles and you go just how many knobs and buttons and things are on there and how do you know how to use all that? And someone in the audience asked this guy, how do you just stay on top of all the technology? How do you keep track of all the moving parts? And he said something I'll never forget. He said, the bigger the tools that you use and the more complicated the situation that you're in, the more you have to know like the tools like the back of your hand so that you can make them disappear. And he went on to say that when you come to the point where you know the tools of the trade and you can make them disappear, that means you are able to focus on what truly matters. In his case, it was creating the experience of the movie. The experience that, you know, uh, Maya Angelou said at one point, one of my favorite quotes from her, she said, I've learned that people will forget what you said, people will forget what you did, but people will never forget how you made them feel. And I've come to find that whatever context that we're in, what we do and what we say, that's like the tools that we're working with, but the, creating the experience of how people feel is what drives us all in any context. And of course, that is so relevant to our industry. And we, you know, we talk about the guest experience all the time. And mm -hmm. that's what we want. We want to make people feel amazing. And the way to do that is just as you've said, you know, just be so knowledgeable about what goes in to making the, all that happen that it comes across as a completely seamless experience. It's almost like you're thinking about any context that we go into, it has the core elements. It has the cake. You have to put all, all the elements, all the ingredients have to be there and they have to be put together mm -hmm. in the right way so that you can actually make a decent cake. But in any context, there is also the frosting. What is the extra? What makes these, what, what makes this cake be amazing? What makes it go over the top? And that is equally applicable when you're talking about how do, you know, in my, in my background, in my time back in LA, which I never actually answered how I got to Cleveland. I'll get to that in a second. <laughs> but, you know, within the context of making TV, you can have just a regular piece of content. How do you elevate it to that upper level? And the same thing when you are preparing a property or when you're putting a property on a market or to, for, so people will come and experience it. How do you make that into an experience that people truly remember? And those kind of experiences are what might feel intangible and squishy, but those feelings translate into revenue. They translate into bookings. They translate into higher average daily rates. They translate into higher occupancy, you name it. It all goes back to feelings. I love the way you put that. Well, how do we get those? Oh, before we get into that, how did you get to Cleveland? 
<laughs> okay. So the, the, the talking about the technicalities of things, everyone said that what we do in television absolutely required everyone to be physically present. It cannot be done mm -hmm. remotely. It will never happen. It cannot be done. Along comes 2020 and says, uh, here, hold my beer, you know, and uh, they say, well, you, you, it's time to figure it out now. So do it. And people will figure it out. And uh, that allowed me to no longer be physically required to be in Los Angeles. And we moved to Northeast Ohio, to the Cleveland area, to be closer to my wife's family. So you're still working within that industry? I occasionally still do client work with different production companies in that industry. In fact, I just locked myself in for another engagement for a show on NBC called American Ninja Warrior. It's going into season 17. It is one of my favorite television shows I've ever worked on. I've worked on it for a very long time, and I love, love, love the stories I get to tell with them. I also do that alongside my consulting work within the accounting industry in terms of, and, and people say, how on earth did that yeah, happen? I was going to well, ask that question. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, along the time when I was first learning about television, I started learning about online business building and coaching. And I started professional coaching that started within the entertainment industry. It expanded to business experts and consultants on their communication skills. And there was a time when an accounting company said, we have in-house experts that we want to uh, that, that they need to become excellent, confident communicators, but they are mumbly accountants. Please help us. Can you do this? And I said, yes, I can. So uh, worked with that company and many different people within that company. And uh, I've been focusing exclusively with communication strategy and communication coaching within the accounting industry ever since. To my point that I made earlier, I thought Hollywood and was just about TV and movies. It is about the ideas. It is about the emotions and the concepts that drive the feelings mm -hmm. underneath them. That applies to accounting, and that most definitely applies to short-term rentals. It does indeed. So let's move into talking about how, sure. how storytelling just contributes to those feelings. Because it's, it's easy for... Somebody who's thinking about going on vacation, they go to Airbnb, say, they go to a listing, they like what they see, they click the book now button, and off they go. And there, there's a lot of people who are more than happy to do that. There's an equally large number of people who want more than that. They want some form of authenticity about where they're going. It's not just a pinpoint on a map. They're going to a place, a location. They want to experience everything about that. And they cannot find that information just simply by instant booking on an OTA platform. And these are the people that we are trying to reach, the people that want these more authentic travel experiences to learn about the locations. And storytelling is all about how we get that information that we as property managers and hosts know about, you know, where we live and where we've grown up and where we've bought our holiday home and to be able to share that with, with these guests. So talk a little bit more about what story actually is. I mean, you, your company is called, your, your, the company where you're helping and coaching um, accountants is called Story Greenlight. So- right. I think I'm going to ask you to explain that first, how we got that name. And then I want you to talk about story itself. What is it and, and how we can adapt and we can take this on board ourselves to create something special for our guests? Sure. Well, originally, when I first thought about the concept, when I first named the company Story Greenlight, at the time, I thought that story was the whole point. I have since realized that story is not the whole point. Story is a vehicle. We'll get to that in a second. I mean, we've already kind of been talking about that a little bit, but story is something inherently human. It is one of the primal forms of communication that we do. So it's almost impossible to engage in any kind of human communication at all without the concepts that drive story coming into play. So I'll put a pin in that for a second. 
because story is not what most people think it is, at least not in its full sense. Then in terms of the green light, a lot of people might have heard of the term green light in terms of a, uh, a stamp of approval or the idea of a thumbs up to say, yes, let's go, let's do this. And uh, for many, many decades, people have been coming to, the, to Hollywood, going to a TV network or a, or a movie studio saying, hey, I have a story to tell. Will you please give me permission to tell my story with your resources, with your soundstage, with your crews and technicians and creatives and your distribution platform? And uh, please let me tell my story. Will you give me permission? And the executive said, why? Well, hmm, okay, well, oh, all right. Um, most people would say no, but for you, we will say yes. Here, sign this incredibly limiting contract and we will make most of the money. And most storytellers say yes. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Can I have another? So the fact of the matter is the world has clearly changed to the point where anyone who has a phone now has a production studio in their pocket. And anyone who has access to the internet has the distribution platform. So the question is no longer, do I have permission to say what I want to say? The question is now, what do I say? How do I say it? Where do I say it? And why do I say it? And all of a sudden you have people who are confronted with these questions that are far bigger than they might have ever considered. And so that's, those are the kind of things that we talk about at Story Greenlight, what you say, how you say it, and where you say it. And in the business context, why does this matter? How does this help business? How does this help our clients and our customers get what they want? So that's the idea of Story Greenlight within the name of the company. But the thing that I want to point out at the very beginning is story is not what people necessarily think it is. Because you say the word story and a lot of people say, oh, well, that's the thing that we, you know, you do over the water cooler, whether in person or digitally, uh, remote water cooler kind of thing. And you say, hey, here's what happened over the weekend and that kind of a thing. And you, and you share an anecdote. That is what I refer to as a tactical story. We have all heard tactical stories told well, and we've all heard tactical stories told badly. And people think that, oh, well, it's, it's just something you're born with. Mm -hmm. Because the people who tell stories really well, they just make it seem effortless. They must have some talent that they're born with. And the fact is, this is not. Anyone who's a master at something makes it look easy. It is uh, Storytelling is based on frameworks and ideas and skills. Frameworks and ideas and skills can be learned by anyone, full stop. So if you want to learn how to become a communicator through storytelling, you absolutely can. End of story. Right there. The bigger picture, the reason why tactical stories either work or don't work is based on what I refer to as the strategic storytelling forces, which operate at the big picture at 40,000 feet. And it all starts where I take all of my clients. We always start at the place of what a story is. And this, it, I use this definition that I've expanded from some early writings by Donald Miller. And I say that a story is where a character wants something, overcomes obstacles to get it, and experiences transformation as a result. Now, if you're listening to this or watching this and, and you have the opportunity to hit the back the 50 or 30 second back button and just write that down and put it up on your wall. I guarantee if you put that and you get that into your brain, it will change the way how you communicate with anyone, anywhere, for any reason ever, period. And if it sounds like I'm exaggerating, I promise you I'm not. But when you think about it, you have this idea of a character who wants something, overcomes obstacles to get it and experiences transformation as a result. You have the ideas of identity. You have desire, you have obstacles, and you have change. We're all looking for change into the, into the world. And whether we're looking for that for our businesses or for our owners or for our hosts or for our guests. So as you could guess, I could talk about this for a very long time. So I'll <laughs> stop talking now. Uh, what I, Any reaction so far? Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking about this ABT framework and just okay. trying to think about how property manager could use this to share their story about their company. Okay. So ABT is actually a separate outgrowth of this core definition. 
We can go there if you'd like. Okay. So, so coming back to that core definition, just tell yeah. me again. Okay. So the core definition of what a story is, mm -hmm. is a character who wants something. Yeah. Overcomes obstacles to get it. Okay. Yeah. And experiences transformation as a result. I was jumping ahead for a moment All good. there. I was jumping ahead. So, the, <laughs> so and, I, and the, the, I, I can see that our, you know, our guest, you know, is the character that wants, mm -hmm. wants something. And the, or, de or depending on the context, if you are a management company looking to take on a new property mm -hmm. and you're engaging with the owner, maybe they're the character, maybe they're the character who, right. In this. So, so it could, it, it's, it's anybody really that you, you deal with. I mean, in our organization, in the Vacation Rental Formula Business School and our Thrive mm -hmm. program, we talk about our key stakeholders, which are our guests, our owners, the community and the team. Okay. So it, it seems that each one of these can be, each one of these stakeholders can be addressed by this core framework. 100%. Absolutely. So the challenge with these kind of ideas is there are so they're, they're so big picture and they're so strategic in nature. It's easy to say, okay, well, that's nice, but how do you actually yeah. put this into use? So uh, let's start digging down here. What's uh, what context you want to go to first? Um, I would like to, I would like to go to the context that I think most, a lot of property managers are struggling with uh, at the moment in this, in this current market. We've, we've been through COVID. We went through some very just massively busy years in 20, 2020 and 2021 to a degree in 2022. And then it's begun to wind down. And what's happened is that there is a mass or there was saturation in the market. A lot of people went out at the end of COVID and saw that this was a great market to be in. So they bought properties and they put them on the rental market, which in some areas just doubled the um, supply, the in inventory, the supply. Yeah. And now there is this massive saturation in so many areas. And at the same time, the economy has stretched people's ability to to take vacations like they used to. The revenge travel is beginning to wind down a little bit and, and people are settling back into pre-COVID style of, of living, I guess. But yeah. the thing is, is that pre-COVID, there were half the amount or probably way less than half the amount of available properties that there are now. So that's a long way of saying that property managers are struggling because of saturation, because of you know, not as many guests as they would like to have. So they need to find ways to differentiate. So that was a yes. long way around saying that these property managers are looking for differentiation. How do they do this by using story? Number one answer is know your ideal client. You cannot say, we will rent this property to anyone. I know that might sound like heresy to some people, but if you say, we are for everyone, look at this amazing property, it's good for everyone. People who have specific needs, well, first, first of all, people who are just looking for a property in general, they have no way of knowing that your property is any different or in any way unique from anything else. If that's all you say is we're great for everyone. However, if you say we are the perfect property for you, if you are fill in the blank, I've heard some of your conversations uh, on some of your episodes. So if, if you love your pets mm -hmm. and you need to have a pet, with you. Say, say you have a service dog, say you have two service dogs and most properties are, you know, properties might be okay with, with one animal, but hardly any of them would ever be okay with two. Even if they're highly trained, you know, just it, if you have any kind of special needs, mobility, access, if you have any specific interests, if you're specifically going to this place because you want to catch the world series or some of my family members are coming in they live on the other side of the world, but they are actually coming to visit family here. And while they're here, they're, they're taking in some soccer games. 
which the rest of the world knows as football. But here in the U.S., you know, we call it soccer. And, footy. Uh, it's footy to us. <laughs> okay, footy. So all that. And, and, and so if they specifically are looking for this property because they want to catch the footy game, when you are able to present your property in a specific way for a specific person who says, I specifically want this for this reason. These are the things that I want. I'm the character and I want these things. Also, by the way, we do not want those things. It's a whole other angle you can approach things from too. That is how you say, okay, this is how you start to differentiate your property. And this is all just to, just to, Throw this, you know, throw this for the, you know, for the, for the one of the overall themes that I'd like to people to be able to take away. When you use strategic storytelling, you can use the power of story in your communication without ever telling a tactical story at all. Now, tactical storytelling, the way that we most normally understand it, is an incredibly powerful tool, but it doesn't even have to be anything that you do necessarily. It can be, but it doesn't have to be. So just come back to this whole idea of tactical storytelling again. So mm -hmm. give me that differentiation in the terms of this property manager offering something that's not the same as their competitors. How do they approach this from both a tactical and a strategic story place? Yeah. So when you're wanting to present a property, for instance, when you are able to have a very specific audience in mind, you can take elements of, well, that, that, is, that is the strategic view of storytelling by knowing who they are, knowing what they want, offering them what they want, and so that they get the change in their life mm -hmm. that they're looking for, that experience, that perfect property, et cetera. That is the strategic element of these things. If you happen to use tactical versions of storytelling, as in the obvious places to be on, on your about page who are you? Why did we get into this? Mm -hmm. What do we care about? And what do we want to see happen with people want, who come to our properties? That's where you can put a tactical story in there. However, you can even take this in terms of saying a tactical story when, you, when attaching that to a specific property in the property description, instead of just being like everyone else who says, these are all the, all the features, this is the neighborhood. Even if you have a short couple sentences of about something unique about the neighborhood, how the neighborhood was set up, I don't know, maybe there's a museum set up nearby and the neighborhood used to be connected to the owner of the, of the museum. And so, you know, you can mm -hmm. mention, mention that within that because that helps start to, start to give some character of this specific property within a specific neighborhood. If that makes sense to the property, then that's how you can start weaving a small version of tactical storytelling when you keep that strategic picture in mind of who your audience is and what they want. Yeah. There's a number of people who do this so well. I mean, I, I interviewed recently Lorraine, Lorraine Woodward from a company called, it's a listing site called Becoming Rent Able. And yes. that is, you know, it's all accessible accommodation. So that is specifically aimed. So that's st strategic ways aiming that at at the people that not and and she talks about accessibility not just being having a ramp and some grab bars in a shower but talking about the neighborhood and how you can access around the neighborhood but also talking about different types of disabilities that her guests may have you know Maybe it's older people who need more lighting inside a property. And just mentioning that, mentioning how wonderful it would be to sit in this beautiful reading chair, which is well lit. I mean, that to me, if, if I was in that position of perhaps being partially sighted or having some sight issues, that would speak right to me because that's what I want. I want to be able to sit and read a book and not have to worry about lighting and having overhead harsh lighting on. So that, that's right. just one. Is that one, is that one good example? Absolutely. <laughs> I mean, and, and even what, one of the big things that happens, you know, I actually heard a good chunk of that conversation talking about rentable and, you know, just the idea of there are a lot of people who don't know that disabilities or alternative ablement is not just are you in a wheelchair or not? Mm. There is the mental 
and psychological side of things. And there, there are other versions of physical, uh, of, of physical challenges. I mean, when you, even just saying we have hosted what we've hosted people with all ranges of physical levels of ablement, and here's how we've adjusted our property to be a welcoming place for you. That right there is strategic. It, 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 it is strategically placed communication that is not a tactical story, mm-hmm. but it actually speaks to the strategic desire of what people want. And it, for, it, it can also function as an idea of education because a lot of people, they may not even know that these different levels of ability or ablement even exist. So I think one, one of the things that just came to mind as you're saying that was a lot of the times when you look at a property listing, so much of it is focused around features. One of the core concepts in marketing is to say, uh, okay, features are important, but what are the benefits? What's the so what? Mm -hmm. What does this mean? What does this make possible? I think a very powerful way to communicate these bigger picture strategic desires is to say, when you're talking about your listing, reading nook, beautifully well-lit, dimmable light sources Mm -hmm. so that you can have as much as much or as little light for your reading experience as you like. It's not just, we have a reading nook with a lamp. It's yeah. how does this help you get what you want? Yeah. I, I love that. I love that. That, that is, that's just, uh, once again, a story in itself because you just imagine yourself being there and, mm-hmm. and sitting and doing that thing that you like to do on vacation. So we've been talking a bit about, you know, communicating more at a surface level. I want to talk about, you know, how do you connect with an audience's deeper emotions, their deeper needs about a location, about visiting somewhere they've never visited before? Right. So one of the core concepts I talk about with my clients is an idea called the thing under the thing. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of the easiest ways to imagine this is the classic idea of an iceberg. And you see an iceberg in the ocean and you see, oh, look, there's an iceberg. It's floating on top of the ocean. But what you don't see is that the true bulk, the mass of this enormous iceberg is all hidden under the surface. And what happens is people tend to talk about things that are obvious, things that are surface level. People talk about the features of the, you know, the benefits of the property in this context. But if you actually go go down below the surface and you know who your audience is and you know the things that they care about or you have done the homework to ask the questions about what they care about, you will find that they have made attachments from the surface level things to the deeply rooted things that they really, really care about. Another example of this, completely outside the rental home world, uh, you know, in Hollywood, there is a there's a district of Hollywood that has stars on the sidewalk. Mm-hmm. It's known as the Hollywood Walk of Fame. And most people in Los Angeles stay away from it because it's covered with tourists most of the time. But there are some people among the thousands and thousands of people who come to Los Angeles with a dream in their heart. They walk on that sidewalk and they look at the names of the people on those stars and they say, wow, that person did it. That person became a star. This person did it. This person did it. If they did it, I can do it too. And so for them, they're walking on that same surface level thing. They're walking on a sidewalk with some decorations on it. But the things that, but, but, but that sidewalk represents to them their own dreams it's equally possible that someone has been in Hollywood for five years or 10 years and they've been banging their head against the wall. They have not achieved their dreams. And they can then at that point, after banging their head against the wall and being rejected over and over and over and over and over, they walk on that same sidewalk. And that sidewalk is no longer connected to the idea of of dreams that are possible. It's the dreams that have been shattered. So those ideas, it's the same surface It's the thing that's connected to completely different things under the thing. They can be completely different depending on who the person is and what they care about, which is why it's so important bringing it about, bringing it back to our context here. 
you must know who you're talking to. You must mm -hmm. know what they care about because when you can talk about this house, it's a row house in the historical district of Philadelphia where the founding fathers signed the Declaration of Independence. If someone deeply cares about the history of the United States, you will trigger emotional connections with those people by saying, this property is here, where it all happened. All these things happen right here. You can be right in the middle of the history. You can participate in the history of your country. That is a deeply, deeply emotional element that you can attach to that property mm -hmm. that you would never have gotten if you would have just said, it's close to the Liberty Bell. It's, you know, it's in downtown Philadelphia. Not much street parking. Good luck with that. Yeah, you know, just whatever. But the, the bigger point is when you can know who your person is, what they care about, and you can make a reference to those deeper level things within the pictures of your property, the exterior, the interior, some of the details of the property. If you can even drop a couple sentences or, or even a phrase here or there talking about the history or the cultural relevance or the style of mm -hmm. the, the, the style of what's there, all of a sudden you have the possibility of tapping into those deeply held emotional desires that are already there in your clients. We used to have a, when I was running my property management company, we had a, a gorgeous little cottage and it was very, it was pretty basic, but it sat on a little spit of land. So it had uh, water on three sides and you'd sit in the dining room and, and all you had was, it was like being in a boat. You had mm. water on, on three sides. All our properties were waterfront, every single one of them. And in fact, you know, anybody looking to rent a property in Ontario was looking for a property on the water. So it really didn't distinguish itself from any others apart from, you know, we could say it's like sitting on a boat. But what it did have, and the first thing when I went to look at this property on the wall, there were some photos that were taken way back in the 19, maybe 19, I can't remember now, my 1930s, 1940s, of people enjoying their time at this cottage, very early photos. Mm. But it wasn't just people these were this this was the the founder of the Toronto Maple Leafs hockey. Ooh. <laughs> and Okay, keep going. And it was it was I believe if I if if and I've probably got my timings wrong, my dates wrong, but it was whatever at that time was when the Maple Leafs was founded, the owner would bring I think he believed he owned the cottage and he would bring his friends and that's where they talked about starting this hockey team that's what we hooked into not that is genius not, not so much the the water on three sides but this one photograph and people would come because it had that connection you know, so really, what did people say well, yeah, I mean, if you know anything about the Maple Leafs, you know, it's been a long time since they won the Stanley Cups. <laughs> 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 they, uh, yeah, I mean, we, we had a lot of jokes about that, but, uh, but people would come because it, it was, it had that historical story. It had history. And that's what we tried to seek in a lot of properties that were older, that really didn't have much going for them apart from water, which is just like everybody else's water. Yeah. But we would seek out the, 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 the stories, the first people that bought it. Was it your grandfather that came from, you know, that, that emigrated and the first thing they did was, was build this cottage on a lake because that was the story that, that drove the marketing. Yeah. Beautiful. And that's fantastic. Yeah, we, had, we had quite a few of those. We had, we had one property that, I mean, it was a beautiful stone place, but the original story was that the cottage was brought to the location on a horse-drawn cart. The, what? The, the original cabin was towed to this place on a horse-drawn cart. That's amazing. And then, I love that. and then the stonework was all built around it, but it still had those original features, and they had photos of this cabin on the back of this cart. So, yeah, so, that is so cool. Yeah, I just love that. I mean, that, that to me is, is using story to create that picture and to, to actually get to the, that, the, the emotions and, and 
memories of of people who were coming. But, well, uh, and 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 again, it's not just this is something that's nice to have because it's a cool little story. These are things that make your property stand out and it makes people pick your property instead of the other one, which means more revenue for your property. So it's easy to sleep on these ideas and to think, oh, well, this is this nice. N this is nice and it's not a big deal. And I, I, I need to I, I need to refresh my data feed from air DNA and make sure my dynamic pricing is up to snuff. You know, it's like, well, that, yes, that's part of the cake, but the experience, the experience of what is being delivered through the property, mm -hmm. what people want, what people expect, how you are delivering on their expectations and how you are creating memories for them. That is what sets properties apart in a unique and special way. Yeah, that's perfect. Just as we're coming up to our time, I've got loads more questions, but I'm not going to get through them all. But I wanted to come to this particular one, which was about thought leaders. Um, mm -hmm. How can rental managers leverage storytelling to position themselves as thought leaders in their location? Because that is one thing that can set them apart. And I know of, of many who have done exactly this. They understand their community and they share that through their storytelling about you know what happens in the community and how long they've been there and why they chose it in the first place. So just finish off, Jeff, by sort of linking into what you're doing with your current accountancy audience, helping them become thought leaders. How can thought leaders be generated in this industry using this, these same tactics? Sure. Well, within the accounting world, a lot of the clients that I'm working with are focusing on how do they communicate in a way that creates the client advisor relationship. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people are surprised when I ask them, I said, have you ever thought of yourself as a thought leader? And they say, oh, no, no, I don't have a Wall Street Journal or New York Times bestselling book. I'm not standing on a TED Talk stage and I have no desire to uh, just keep me away. <laughs> and I say, what, what if... When you are engaging with a one-on-one -on -one conversation with a client and you're helping them see the world differently, what if that was thought leadership right there? What if it was you offering new ideas or perspectives to your clients or within a broader business context, your stakeholders or your potential clients or you know, just whoever? When you are offering a new way of thinking people, you are already being a thought leader. So the question is, how well are you doing at that? Because, you know, the bigger, the bigger point is that thought leadership can actually be seen as a continuum. It goes from one-on-one -on -one conversations all the way up to the one to many thousands, millions, whatever. You, you know, it's all part of that. Within our context here, when you stand up you know, kind of what we were talking about before we hit record here. When you talk about the OTAs saying we have 87 million listings here, we're the monsters in the room. And you say, well, OK, well, we don't know where this property is. What's the neighborhood like? What's there? What's not there? When you as a manager or an independent host or an independent owner can stand up and say, hey, I know the neighborhood. I know what the history is. I know what's happening here. I know what it's like. What do you want to know about this? Here are some answers to your questions. You can do this. You can stand up and you can differentiate yourself as a thought leader within your region, within your neighborhood, within your city, and say, the big guys don't know about this stuff. And let me give you the real inside scoop. Here's why this neighborhood is so cool. And here's why you need to stay here. And that can show up in and one on one conversations that can show up with you on social media that can just show up on your about page on your website and we work through all your website. It can go anywhere you want, but it starts by thinking of, hey, there's a different perspective mm -hmm. that's available for, for you and you can be better off if you see the world in a new way. I love that. I love that. And that is a great point where we will 
we will wrap this up, Jeff. I think that you've done an amazing job sharing your story about story. Where can the people who are listening get a hold of you? Where can they get in touch with you? Well, if you're listening to what we're talking about and you like the ideas and you're looking to say, okay, tell me more, how do these ideas fit on top of themselves? I actually have a select group of podcast episodes that for the record is targeted specifically towards the world of accounting. However, it is uh, the ideas are absolutely applicable towards the context that we've been talking about here. You can learn about those ideas and how they all stack on top of each other if you go to storygreenlight.com slash VRS, as in vacation rental success. Go to storygreenlight.com slash VRS. And if you are in a place where you're saying, you know what, this is important. I would like more help personalizing these ideas for myself, for my people, for my team, for whatever stakeholders I have. There is a way for a complimentary, no strings attached consultation one on one with me at that URL. And uh, it would be my gift as to you as a listener to this podcast. So that can be found at storygreenlight.com slash VRS. That is an amazing offer, Jeff. Thank you so much for sharing that. I will see you tomorrow. <laughs> In, in our mastermind <laughs> bright, and <early. laughs> bright and early it's been an absolute pleasure having you on the show and uh, and having you share your knowledge of of communications and storytelling and you've told some great stories so thank you i really appreciate you huge appreciation for you heather thank you thank you so much Jeff Barch from Story Greenlight. I really loved that conversation. We've talked about story before, and but not so much in depth as we did there. So, you know, I, I definitely encourage you to go check out Story Greenlight, go and check out some of Jeff's podcast episodes and go get a complimentary consultation with him as well, because he's got a really nice voice. <laughs> so it's, it's, it's very nice to listen to, and he really knows his stuff. So that's it for another week. I hope you have enjoyed this as much as I did, and I look forward to being back with you again next time. It's been a pleasure as ever being with you. If there's anything you'd like to comment on, then join the conversation on the show notes for the episode at vacationrentalformula.com. We'd love to hear from you. And I look forward to being with you again next week.